Hi there, this is Mr Evans and in this video I'm going to introduce price elasticity of demand, particularly looking at how to calculate price elasticity of demand. So we're on this section here, interpreting price uh, elasticity of demand. Um, there'll be a couple of videos on this and then I'll look at income elasticity of demand. Um, before we get into it, um, let's just have a quick read what AQA want us to be able to do. The student should be able to interpret price and income elasticity of demand data and be able to analyse the impact of changes in price and income on revenue. They do not need to be able to calculate these. Just on that point, they do not need to be able to calculate these. Okay, it says that in the specification, but um, I know uh, that if you you know, I, I examine for AQA, and I know that if a student uses um, the information that they find on price elasticity of demand and does a calculation with it, that is very impressive and uh, will help a, a student to secure uh, high marks if they use that calculation correctly and interpret it and explain what it means for the business. So, um, although it says that in the specification, a really good business student will be able to use uh, the information they're given on price elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand, to support an analytical answer in an exam. So, um, what is price elasticity of demand? Um, it sounds scary, it really isn't. It's a very interesting topic and it's very important for businesses to have some understanding of. Uh, of what price elasticity of demand is, is it looks at the relationship between um, the quantity of a product that is demanded and the price of that product. So specifically, if there is a change in price, price elasticity of demand looks to um, consider the impact that that change in price will have on the quantity demanded and therefore there are obviously implications for a business's revenue and a business's uh, profits. So um, just uh, after the formula there, um, which you should make sure that you uh, know, the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price Price elasticity of demand looks to explain the strength of the relationship between price and the quantity of a product demanded. Is there a strong relationship between the price and the quantity demanded, or is there a relatively weak relationship? In other words, can a business change its price without there being a massive change in demand? So, uh, we've got our formula and we understand now that price elasticity of demand looks at the relationship between how a change in price will affect demand. So let's look to interpret that. So um, price inelastic demand occurs when a change in price leads to a less than proportional change in demand. So what does that mean? Well, let's get an example. Let's see, say a business increases its price by 12%. Well, if we understand the law of demand, we know that an increase in price will tend to uh, lead to a fall in the quantity demanded. So uh, there is an inverse relationship between these two variables. As one goes up, the other should go down. As price goes up, the quantity demanded should go down and vice versa. Um, so there is an inverse relationship between these two things. Um, and in this example, the price increases by 12%, but the quantity demanded falls by 8%. We can see that there is a less than proportional change in demand following the 12% price rise. Demand only falls by 8% when we put our price up by 12%. Okay, so that's interesting. That would give us a price elasticity of demand um, calculation or coefficient, I think it's pronounced, but I'm not terribly good at that, um, of 0.67. So, when we calculate uh, price uh, elasticity of demand and we come out with a figure that is between 0 and minus 9.999, for example, minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.97, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.67, all of these are examples of 
price inelastic demand. If you get a figure that starts minus zero point something, the minus represents that inverse relationship. As one goes up, the other goes down. Um, and uh, the zero point represents that the uh, quantity demanded has changed proportionally less than the price. In other words, price is not terribly responsive to changes in um, demand, sorry, it's not terribly responsive to changes in price. There will be variations within this, this 0 0.97, that in terms of, uh, that is more responsive than a figure of, say, 0 0.3. Um, a final point, sometimes you may see um, a figure like 0 0.52, well, because we know the law of demand, there is, there is an inverse relationship. Sometimes, um, and it shouldn't happen in an exam, but sometimes uh, a, a minus figure may be eliminated because um, it's assumed that, that everybody knows that as one goes up, the other goes down. So generally, if it's got a zero in front of it, this means that this is a price inelastic product, and when the price of it changes, there's a less than proportional change in demand. In other words, consumers don't really respond to changes in price, and we'll have a look at why that might be in a minute. Um, okay, so we've got our price inelastic demand. Price elastic demand is the opposite of that. It occurs when a change in price leads to a more than proportional change in demand. So what would that look like? Well, this time, uh, we increase our price by 12%, um, but the quantity demanded for our product falls by minus 16%. This time, there is a greater proportional change in demand, minus 16%, following our change in price. So let's just calculate that. That would give us a price elasticity demand of minus 1.33. Uh, minus 16 divided by 12 equals minus 1.33. So, um, big problem, that is uh, the wrong slide, hopefully this will be the right one. Uh, okay, so that should read the, um, uh, the coefficient of a elastic product is less than minus one. So these will be all elastic uh, measures, okay? So if it's minus 1.1, if it's minus two, if it's minus one. 7 minus 1.3. All of these indicate that following a change in the price, the demand changes by proportionally more. Um, in other words, this uh, top uh, part of the uh, fraction is heavier. Okay, so um, if you're ever coming out with uh, 1 point something, 1 point 7, 3 point 2, um, they are uh, very uh, elastic products. The demand changes more than the price. In other words, as prices change, consumers are very responsive and change their purchasing behavior as a result of that. Just as a word of warning, the, uh, you shouldn't need to calculate it, but if you do and you're coming out with a figure of say four or six, you're probably uh, a little bit off and you should check your figures again. Um, the biggest uh, one I've seen in, in an exam is minus 2.7. Um, again, sometimes we eliminate the minus figure um, because uh, we assume the law of demand is known, uh, the inverse relationship between those two variables. Um, and if you ever see a figure like 1.6, it's probably a mistake and it means that uh, the uh, examiner is trying to tell you there's uh, elastic demand. So what are the determinants of price elastic demand? Um, price elasticity of demand. Um, the number of close substitutes. So if there aren't very many close substitutes for a product, uh, that will tend to lead to um, inelastic price elasticity of demand because consumers don't really have a choice. If the price goes up, um, uh, they will have to keep on purchasing the product because there's not really any alternatives. Um, whether the product is a luxury or a necessity. 
uh, necessities tend to have a full, far more inelastic price elasticity of demand because um, you've got to keep on buying them. If the price of food goes up, there's not really any alternatives to food. You can't eat um, clothes because they're cheap. Um, you're going to have to keep on buying food uh, regardless of the price increase. Whereas luxuries uh, tend to be far more price uh, price elasticity of demand elastic, um, have far more elastic uh, uh, response to a change in price because um, their area people can, can choose whether to consume them or not. Um, habitual goods such as cigarettes and alcohol might have a relatively price inelastic demand because you know, for those consumers there aren't very many substitutes. Um, the percentage of income spent is also a consideration. So if um, the price of a product that costs 10p increases by 100% to 20p, I might not even notice that because it's such a small portion of my income. However, if um, the price of a flight to the uh, Maldives um, doubled in price from 1,000 to 2,000, it's the same 100% increase in price. I'm far more likely to notice that because it's a much bigger percentage of my income. So the higher the percentage of my income, the more elastic the demand will tend to be. Finally, over time, um, consumers' uh, products tend to become more price elastic. So for example, with petrol and the price of petrol, in the short term, um, demand for petrol is relatively price inelastic. If the price of petrol changes, people have to keep on buying it uh, because it's a necessity for travelling to work and transporting goods around the country. However, over time, it's likely that we will find alternatives for petrol, such as other sources of fuel and uh, renewables, and therefore over time the demand for the uh, petrol will become relatively more price elastic as more alternatives are found. Okay, so quite a lot of information in that video. Might be worth watching twice. Um, if you have any questions that you need to ask, please just ask me on price elasticity of demand. Really important topic.